and welcome back to Entertainment Corner. Today I'm going to be doing a video of my indicator haul. I spent about $200 on it and I'm going to try to make this video really nice. Um, I got my new 4K cam, well it's not new anymore, I keep talking about it being new, but it's about a month old now, um, or maybe a little bit more. But uh, I keep looking up at the screen, I want to make sure everything's all nice. I got my microphone for better audio since it's closer to me. Uh, I do have a microphone that I purchased, but I don't have the XLR cable for it yet because it, it has to go to like mini XLR to be put into my camera. Anyway, stuff you don't care about, but I think that should be like just slightly out of focus and then you should be able to see everything else in focus and me in focus. So I'm um, praying for that. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, I spent, yeah, so I spent a hundred and I think it was 170 on movies and then $30 on shipping, which Sorry, I was moving the stack. For for you know, twenty four movies is what I got. It's not a bad price at all, because um, you can actually shop in Indicator's website. I'm gonna try to actually look at the ones this time. Um, you can actually shop on Indicator's uh, website in USD to like show you how, what the prices will be, and then they put that you they give you the delivery fee or whatever and any taxes you have to pay. I live in Oregon, so I don't actually have to pay sales tax, um, but you know all that stuff's added, and then. I said in there, I looked in their frequently asked questions and it said that you may get charged, you know, more fees or whatever when it comes to the United States, but I asked around and people said that hadn't happened to them and it didn't happen to me. So I don't think it'll happen, but they have some really good deals. It's three for 11 pounds or whatever on their website. And I mean, that, that just comes out to really like a really good price. So yeah, like I said, I mean, 24 movies. And by the way, these aren't just like, oh, I'm kind of interested. These are like these are my kind of movies like i mean i've never seen them i don't know if they're good but a lot pretty much every movie and i have it pulled up on imdb um all of them this is like when i looked them up the synopsis the, so, the synopsis sounded good the actors and the cast looked pretty good except you know for the ones i did know and the ratings overall were pretty decent like you know anywhere from like high five to like you know eight um, is where most of them lie. And, you know, even a five or a six on IMDb isn't terrible. Uh, it just, it's, it, to me, that tells it's kind of a, either you love it or you hate it or something like that, you know. Um, but a lot of these, like, reviews on them were good, too. Um, so I haven't checked out all of them. I've checked out, I think, like, two or three at this point. And I'll tell you what I think about them when I go by. But um, let's try this. I hope everything looks good. I hope it doesn't fail. And I hope not to take too long on this video, but... I did want to shout out Indicator because they did a really good job packaging the thing and it came super quickly and I feel like the price was totally fair. They sent it to me from 6,000 miles away and I got it in one week for $31 or something like that. On top of paying $170 or whatever for the movies, hundred you know I think including the shipping, I did like 200 divided by 24. I think it ended up being anywhere from 7 to $8 per Blu-ray. And for movies that are like actually good and a little bit harder to find, like I'm not gonna probably find most of these even on DVD at the thrift store. A fantastic price. I mean, absolutely, you cannot beat like seven to eight dollars per. So let's uh, stop jibber jabbering. Okay, so I had some camera difficulties. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. It's gonna be really annoying. You guys don't know, but anyway, let's get started. We have ten Rillington Place, which is a movie about a serial killer named John Christie. Um, definitely looks kind of interesting. It's a British film in color. And in fact, they spell color with the U if you see down there at the bottom. And some of these have, actually I think most of these have inside artwork, like on the, the back the back of the cover, but um, this one doesn't. And then you can see the Blu-ray disc there excited to check that one out. I'm not like super into horror, but like that one kind of seems like it's up my alley. It's like thriller kind of stuff. This one, Age of Consent, and by the way, this is all alphabetical except for um, some of the Jack Nicholson movies I bought. That'll be at the end. But anyway, uh, Age of Consent, this is a really good one. If you want to see my review of it, go check it out on my Instagram uh, at Entertainment Corner. Um, it's also going to be linked in the description. It was such a beautiful film. I loved it. Um, I, yeah, if you want to see my thoughts, just go there. I just, I, it puts you in a place that feels magical. It's like, oh, this is what film's about. This is like, this is the kind of place that film can transport you to. 
and that's how I felt with this. And the, the the extras on this. I mean, just look at how many freaking extras there are. There's pretty much, I think there's a whole not- another movie. It's like 50 minutes. And so many special features. Like, I think two interviews with Martin Scorsese about the movie and just, like, how it influenced him and tons of cool... I didn't check all of it out, but it is packed. It is jam-freaking-packed. So definitely worth picking this one up. Um, next up we have... Is, oh, and Age of Consent, by the way, it's about a painter and um, a girl on an island, I guess. I don't have to, I wasn't going to exactly like talk about all of the plot details of all of them, but since I had seen that one, I'll at least say that much. Whoa. And we're back. So, badge 373, I've not seen this one, but this one is about um, suspended New York City cop, his ex-partner is murdered, and he vows to clean up the streets just pulling it off imdb i have it up on my screen but i don't think any of these really list i mean they have like little taglines but i don't think any of them really list like what the movie is on there that's the only downside i would say but some of these are just so jam-packed with special features it's all they can really put on there so this one's from the 70s and it has robert duvall verna bloom henry darrow and eddie Egan. i've never heard of any of well i've heard of robert duvall but that's it um, next up we have is Birdie, and this one is a, what is this, Nicolas Cage, right? Yep, N- Nicolas Cage, and actually, quite a few of these are region-free, if you see a, where is it, yeah, it's on this side, A, B, and C, um, some of them will just be region B, um, but a lot of these are all regions, so, which is nice, and then you can see some of the other releases they've done. Um, this one is about, uh, two guys in a, who come home from, uh, Vietnam and then one's wants to become a bird. And I heard really good things about it in the reviews. So next one is one called blue collar. And this one has Richard Pryor. Very funny. I loved him in the, um, in the movie with, uh, Gene Wilder, uh, hear, see no evil, hear no evil, or no, yeah, something like that, I can't remember the exact title, but it's a really funny movie, uh, this one is about, uh, people who are trying to steal from their own labor union, um, they discover corruption, and then they decide to use this information for blackmail, so it's a blackmail kind of movie, it's, I assume it's, like, pro, um, you know, the underdog, you know, like, they don't like big, big corporations, I mean, I'm only guessing, I've never seen it, but, Um, anything with Richard Pryor is probably going to be pretty funny so excited to check that one out Um, this one is Body Double by the famous Brian De Palma Um, I've seen Blowout and Dress to Kill I believe are the only two I've seen from him I have Scarface but I haven't actually watched it Uh, this one's also region free this is like a it's a very raunchy I think sex filled kind of one um if I remember correctly, um, I could just look at it right here. A young actor, a young actor's obsession with spying on beautiful women who lives nearby leads to a baffling series of events with uh, drastic consequences. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to check this out. It's an 80. This is actually right after. Gosh, I want to say, I think this is right after Blowout because this came out in 19, 1984 and Blowout came in 1981. So maybe there's one more in between, but. Um, so it's, it's in his heyday. Um, so very excited to check that one out. And then the next one we have is kind of like a black comedy one. It's kind of older one, but it's one of those older ones that it's like on the brink of like the new age. It's like, I, I say the line is somewhere between the sixties and seventies. I would say somewhere in the late sixties is where we kind of cross over because of, you know, the portable, portable airflex cameras and kind of just getting out into nature and getting off the, the, st- the studio lots and the stages and stuff. Um, I don't know about this one where it was filmed exactly, but this was 1972 and that is a day in the death of Joe egg. Um, I've heard pretty good things about it in the reviews, uh, for being a pretty good black comedy, which I'm excited to check it out for that reason. I do like black comedy. Alan Bates sounds very familiar. I'm not sure if I have seen him in something. It's a very, very familiar name, but this is a region free one. Definitely excited to check this one out. Um, And of the ones I've watched, the transfers are really nice. So, I mean, not that Indicator handles that, I don't believe. I don't really think any boutique label handles the transfers. Maybe Criterion? I'm not sure. 
Uh, there's probably a few, but yeah, Alan Bates, I can't remember what he's in, but I'm, I'm fairly certain I've seen him in something. Um, so yeah, the next one is a Denzel Washington movie. I don't know if I've ever actually watched a Denzel Washington movie. I've heard pretty good things, but some of the clips I see from his movies, I'm like, eh, not that interested, but this one is Devil in a Blue Dress, and I believe this is kind of like a cop, 90s cop movie, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 1995. Um, and this one's a Region B um, specific. And I do have a an Australian Blu-ray player, so that's my like region. F- it's not region free, but there's like very few things that are released in Region C. So region like having a standalone Region B player is probably going to cut it for me for most of my things. If I absolutely find something that I that's like I need to get and it's in region C, then I'll just go ahead and buy a region free 4K hacked player or whatever. But I don't want to invest that kind of money right now. So anyway, back to this movie. It's um yeah, this is a political scandal kind of war here. Yeah, okay, so maybe not a cop movie, but like something in that kind of um same vein, I suppose. Um, yeah, I am excited to check it out. I should watch a Denzel movie by now. I mean, it's, he's one of those actors where it's like, you, you gotta kind of watch one of his movies at very least. And this one looks kind of interesting. So that's it for that one. And then, um, well, this one's kind of an interesting one. Well, I keep saying that about all of them. Of course they're interesting. That's why I bought them. But, um, this one's kind of a, I believe it's a little bit horror y. It's uh, from 1972. A lot of 70s movies in here. Uh, Endless Night. And it's about uh, a working class English man um, uh, marries an affable, an affable American Harris, but their marital bliss is soon interrupted when they begin constructing a home on a land alleged to be cursed. So I'm not like huge into like the, you know, like curses and witches and ghosts and zombies and shit like that, but um, this one looked kind of fun. Uh, this is a region B exclusive, um, and I, I did kind of show the back, but I want to make sure you can really see the special features. And yeah, I'm excited to check this one out. It's um, it's got an interesting. Looking at the trailer on IMDb, it kind of looks. Uh, I think it's. Well, I don't know what release this is from, but it's shot. That's in four by three, so I guess that could be. That could be like the DVD, or maybe this is how it's going to look on the Blu-ray. I don't know. No one in here that I really recognize, but it's a it's a British film, so that's probably why. <laughs> Next up we have is a Woody Allen movie. The first Woody Allen movie I ever watched was Manhattan, if I remember correctly. Or maybe there was a different one. I don't know. Well, the most recent one, I should say, um, and probably the first or maybe the second Woody Allen movie I've seen is Manhattan. Uh, I just watched that not too long ago. If you want to see my opinions on it, go check it out on my Instagram. Um, but this one... I the premise of this one sounds a lot more entertaining than Manhattan. I didn't hate Manhattan, but I didn't love it either. This one is about um, the fifties, where um, it's about the blacklisting of um, writers and I believe actors and stuff. Um, this one is region free, so you can pick this up and watch it in any region. Very excited to check this one out, and this one's actually in color, which is nice because Manhattan wasn't and. I mean, it it definitely was a stylistic choice, but I didn't love it. I, I think I think actually Manhattan would have looked like really beautiful had it been shot in color. Nineteen like seventies New York before everything was like completely like changed and went into a whole new era. I don't know the color on that would probably make that film at least a couple times better. Um, again, not that it was horrible, but anyway. Uh, next up we have is definitely a horror thriller. I tend to like thrillers more, but if it's got a little bit of horror in it, I don't tend to mind. Happy Birthday to Me. This one, I believe, is a B or... No, it's all region. Okay. So this one you can check out if you want to... If you don't have a region free player. Um, and this is about... Um, group of friends go missing years after horrible events happened to a girl, I believe... I don't know if it specifies a girl. I think it is a girl. Um, when she was a child, she had a birthday party, and so that's when kind of sparks all this stuff. Um, definitely, definitely on the lower 
tier of ones I'm like most excited to check out. It's not that I'm not excited to check it out, but um, some of these horror movies can be like really hit or miss. Um, but this one has a six out of ten, so it, it could go either way. We'll see. We'll see what that one ends up being like. And then next up we have is this one. I'm actually one of. Them, I think if I had to rank them, this is actually towards the top of them, the ones I'm in, most interested in checking out. This one's housekeeping. Unfortunately, this one's like the one blue case I got. I don't know why. It's just is a blue case. Uh, this one's also region free. Um, kind of annoys me because all of them are the really nice clear cases, and then this one's not. But this one is about. Um, this is about a, a, um, two sisters, uh, go live in their, um, live with their aunt in their grandmother's old house after their mom commits suicide. But this is set in like the 1950s, but this movie was made in the eighties. So definitely intrigued by that one. And I, when I looked at the trailer for it, it, it looked, um, there's some really cool shots of kind of the town so that kind of pulled me in on buying it these three for 11s um you know or whatever that makes out to be in usd these movies are are part of that i don't know you may be able to get like the the extended editions or like you know maybe bigger box sets of some of these movies um on different parts of their website but these are all like the cheap stuff uh so the quality of film and the quality of product they're giving me for like the cheap stuff, it just kind of goes to show what kind of company they are. So again, thanks to them. Anyway, next one is Jagged Edge. This one is with people I do know. Um, Glenn Close and Jeff Bridges from... Jeff Bridges I know from Starman and... Oh gosh, I think one called The Landlord I watched. And he's in plenty of other movies. And then there's Glenn, Glenn Close is from Fatal Attraction. Um, that's what our, where I know her from most. And then region B, this one is, uh, it looks like it's got a few pretty decent, uh, a few decent special features. Sorry. I'm, my mind is going everywhere. I'm trying to like make commentary, make sure my camera's working and not screwing up on me. And then also looking over at my screen to talk about, look at what the movie's about. Oh crap. Anyway, this one's about a wealthy woman being murdered in her beach house. And the husband is allegedly knocked out first. He inherits all the stuff, and he has a female ex-criminal prosecutor to represent him in court. So I'm going to guess kind of like a thriller political drama. Not political, I mean um, thriller court drama. There we go. But hopefully it's not as boring. It's just setting in court. The next one we have is a Dennis Hopper movie, The Last Movie. This is about... Um, a film production wrapping in Peru and then American Wrangler decides to stay behind and witness the ways that the filmmaking has affected the town. This is a region B exclusive. Um, and this is from 1971. So this is right kind of after uh, easy writer. So I'm interested to kind of see what this one's about. I think Dennis Hopper um, and Jack Nicholson and Peter Fonda were all very like, you know, independent spirits thinkers. So I'm expecting this one to kind of have a similar, similar take or similar uh some similar ideas or shared ideas of of freedom and independence and stuff and and um how other people affect each other um because that's a that was kind of central to easy rider was just you know uh the choices that people would make and uh you know certain characters being intimidated by other characters for just being themselves so i'm interested to kind of see how how this one plays out um next up we have is okay this one's probably the one i'm most excited for willem dafoe and susan sarandon in light sleeper this is like a neo noir movie i love noir but neo noir because of color um this one's from 1992 uh, well not just color it, it's also that like Typically, the neo-noir movies are, like, they go around, like, cities and stuff, and it's not just, you know, like, you know, stage stage things, which is what the 50s were, you know, full of. Um, but they're, like, B-movies kind of. So these these are just, like, I feel like a just a slightly better, yeah, a slightly better version of noir films. Um, anyway, I like Willem Dafoe. I think he's a good actor. And Susan Sarandon's pretty good. Um, 
and I saw her in Thelma and Louise, and actually, I believe I remember her from Malcolm in the Middle, if I'm not wrong, which is funny. Uh, this one's about a drug dealer reconsiders his profession when his boss plans to go straight, and an old flame reappears. So I might actually watch this tonight. We'll see. Um, I got this haul about a week ago now. Uh, i just been putting it off the video because I was going on a little bit of a camping trip, um, and I didn't want to rush to do it right before I went, so... Maybe watching this tonight. Next up, we have Modern Romance with Albert Brooks, which I know from Lost in America. Um, and actually, I found out he was uh, he's brothers with Bob Einstein, who is uh, who was on Curb, and he was Super Dave. I've never seen Super Dave, but I know of, of him from Curb. Um, this one is a read and free release in movies from 1981. This one doesn't look like it has a lot of special features, but a few. Um, again, certainly better than some some studios or some boutique labels, I should say. Um, here in the states, so excited to check this one out. Oh, and sorry, th that one is about um, a, dis a successful film editor with far too many issues that affect his relationship between him and his remarkably patient girlfriend. And then next up, we have this one I'm really interested in, uh, Oleana, with uh, William H Macy and Deborah Eisentad. I don't know, something like that. Um, this one is about, like, allegations, I suppose. It, it's like, I think it's like, I think it was a, a play, and it got kind of turned into a movie, or it's set up like that, I suppose. Like, it's kind of like a one- or two-act play, and it's just a couple characters. This one is region-free, um, but it's, when a student visits her professor to discuss how she failed her his course, the discussion takes an awkward turn. So that leaves... Things are a little vague, but I believe what I remember from looking into it is about kind of like some accusations of him, you know, misconduct and stuff. But, um, yeah, I am interested to check this out. I do like William H. Macy. He was actually the, I believe he was the narrator on Curious George for like the first season. Um, yeah. We're getting down to our last few. Um, we got Road Games, and this one has Jamie Lee Curtis. She's in... Halloween, Clue, uh, where else have I seen her? Look at that, stacked with special features. Um, this one's an Australian film, which, by the way, Age of Consent, way back in the video, that's also Australian. Um, I really want to check out Picnic at Hanging Rock, which is another Australian film. But anyway, this is an Australian film from 1981, and this one is Region B exclusive. Um, so yeah I like Jamie Lee Curtis she's pretty good I didn't actually like her well I didn't like Halloween very much to be honest even though I'm a really big John Carpenter fan but Jamie Lee Curtis is a good actor uh, actress whatever um, so I'm interested to see how she'll be in this one and I like Australia I think there's something kind of weird and quirky about them and I, I like their humor and stuff um, and I'd love to go visit Australia and New Zealand those are like top couple places I'd love to go visit outside of like United States um, and that one is about a laid-back American trucker um, who's in South Australia suspects that a driver of a green van is killing young women along his route and plays a game of cat and mouse to catch him. So kind of like a thriller back and forth kind of movie, which definitely up my alley. And then we have, so this one's kind of confusing. So this one's called See No Evil. And I was telling you about the uh, Richard Pryor movie. I think it's See No Evil, Hear No Evil, something like that. Um but this is just like half the title, but it's a completely different movie. It's about a blind woman. Uh, well, I mean, there's a blind person in the other movie, but anyway, um, this is region free. And for some reason, when I saw the cover, I was like, dude, that looks a lot like Shelley Duvall. Um, but Mia Farrow, I believe was in Rosemary's baby. And I, I enjoyed her in that. Uh, this is a British film, I, I guess. And it's from 1971. So yeah, this one looks pretty cool. And oh, I, I do it every time. Uh, it's a young blind woman is pursued by a maniac while staying with family in their country manor. So, sounds fun. Um, okay, this one is this one. I think you could kind of call it a neo noir or at least a cop movie. Um, Someone to watch over me with uh, Tom Baring Beringer and Mimi Rogers. I don't know if I've seen them in anything. This one's from 1987, but the person I do know is Ridley Scott, and Ridley Scott uh, directed Black Rain, one of my favorite Michael Douglas movies, 
and he's done other things. I, I know he's more popular for other things, but um, that was my favorite of his that I've seen. And uh, this is a Region B exclusive. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's about a married New York cop falls for the socialite murder witness uh, he's been assigned to protect. So, yeah, I would say, like, cop crime, neo-noir, whatever. All kind of in that same general genre that I really like. The next up we have is, and we have three more after this one, um, Taste of Fear. This is an old uh, British film from 1961, and this is region free. Got all the special features. Um, really nice. I love the disc artwork on this stuff. It looks so good. And that one is about... Um, a wheelchair-bound young woman returns to her father's estate after 10 years, and although she's told that he's away, she keeps seeing his dead body on the estate. So kind of like a horror, like uh, psychological thriller, maybe. And then this one is uh, a Jack Nicholson. So we're getting to my Jack Nicholson. And the reason I have these separate and, um, is because they're, they're going in my Jack Nicholson collection because I've separated that out in my collection. Um, so I had these at the end. That's how I pulled them out. Anyway, this is The Border. This is Region B exclusive. Um, trying to collect all the Jack Nicholson films I can get. And excited to check this one out. Very excited. Um, it's about uh, a corrupt border agent decides to clean up his act when an impoverished woman's baby is put up for sale on the black market. So i got to finish this up quickly, but we have the last detail. I did watch this one. This is depressing. Um, go check out my review on my Instagram. This is region free. Um, very, very good one. Very good one. And then we have Jack Nicholson, um, in the passenger. This is also region free. I have not watched this one and that's it. All 24 movies. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, sorry. I have to kind of cut it short a little bit. Um, because batteries are being weird, but I got through most of the video. So anyway, thank you to Indicator. Please go check them out. Do great deals and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.